Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. In the last tutorial, we went through on adding some characters to our level and animating them. And then when you walk up to some of them, it now begins dialogue. I fixed a bug where the character wasn't visible, and then we can jump between them. And then we've got a couple of dialogues for a few more people. However, at the moment, the dialogue just starts as soon as you walk up to it. So there's Hiroshi, it just starts straight away. And the American guy, it just starts straight away. And that's not going to be something you want in every game, because you're most likely going to want to be able to interact with them and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you two ways to handle this interaction so you can walk up to the character and press the interact key. The first method I'm going to show you is one that will work more for third person character, will work more for third person games and is the easier way to set it up, but it's absolutely nothing to be put off by. It's the way I use it in most of my games. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to set up an input that we want to control which button we're clicking in order to interact. There we go. And now inside here, I'm going to go inside the import actions and here are all my actions. I should know I am using the enhanced input system. If you're using Unreal 5 Plus, you will have access to it. But if you're using the old style Unreal, then you can just simply go to edit, import, and you can add your inputs here. For the advanced input users, we're going to simply copy one of these existing ones or right click import and create a new data input action. I'm just going to copy this jump one because I know that's what I need. And I'm just going to call it IA interact. And if you double click it, you'll see there's not really much you need to change inside of it. All the settings are set by default, so we can ignore that. The key part for us is going back out and opening up the default data asset context. And if you open up the mappings, you will see a list of all the current mappings. So I'm going to tap the plus and I'm going to add interact as a new one and I'm going to say for, con for PC it's the E key and for controllers I will say it's the bot it's the right button there we go so so on playstations it will be a circle to interact I'm going to save that and I'm going to jump back so now I'm going to go into my first person character here we go and you can just go into your main player and right at the bottom I'm going to right click and I'm going to search for my new interact input action and you will see two values you will see an event and a value you want the event so just tap that like so Perfect. So all this is going to do for the first step is really simply just call an event dispatcher. So at the side here, you'll have event dispatchers. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to call it ED on interact. And all I'm going to do is drop this here, call, and I'm just going to link it up to triggered like so. An event dispatcher is a type of variable called a delegate where it can store functions and calls to events. So we can bind as many events we want to to this ED on interact. And then as soon as we press interact, it will call every function it has in there like a big list perfect so that's the first bit done really simply the next step is to work on our npc so at the moment we come up we check if it's the player we check if they're already in dialogue and then we begin dialogue that simple so i don't want to go and totally replace this because we've got automatic dialogue at the moment and sometimes that's really useful so instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a boolean here called b auto trigger dialogue and i'll just compile and by default it's going to be false so i'm happy for that to stay as false so i'm going to tick the eyeball so i can edit it in the window and then what we'll do is we'll check if the player is already in dialogue and if they are we're just not going to do anything but if they're not then what i'm going to do is move this begin dialogue out of the way just temporarily and i'm going to drag in our auto trigger dialogue and i'm going to hold b and click to create a brand so i'm going to say if the dialogue is auto triggered all it needs to do is simply add in the begin dialogue like so so if our auto trigger dialogue is true then it will just start the dialogue straight away so all we need to do is player into this so what i'm going to do is just drag from this narrative cone and plug it in here and then i can just format it a little bit nicer like so so the lines are nice and obvious next if it's false then what we need to do is bind onto the player's ed interact to basically say begin the dialogue when the player presses interact so i'm going to come to the npc here and i'm going to drag from our player instead here not the narrative component and say assign ed on interact and we're choosing assign and not bind because assign automatically creates an event so it's just a, a tiny bit here. and then we're just going to neaten up our lines like so so i can connect the false to this find ed on interact here and then i'm going to take this dialogue here i'm just going to copy it and paste it below here and add it in like so and then all i can do is come across grab the narrative component again and i'm going to drag from the player and i'm just going to do get narrative component from target and plug it in like so and that's really all we have to do but there is one performance tweak we need to just do quickly to stop a bug is at the moment if we overlap this trigger it'll grab the player and then it'll bind an event to the players on interact but if we leave the radius of that character it will 
will never unbind it and that's something we need to do so it's really simple to do all we're going to do is select the dialog trigger and i'm going to add a on component end overlap like so and then we're just going to do the exact same thing where we check it's the player like so and then if it is the player all we're going to do is drag off from here and choose unbind event from ed on interact you don't want to select all events because it you could be in the radius of more and it might mess up and now this is where the layout gets a bit funky because we need to grab that event there so i'm going to place mine there because we need to grab this red dot and plug it in here like so there we go so what we're saying is on the end overlap so when we leave the radius of the trigger grab the event from here and remove it from the ed interact it's no longer there if we trigger it perfect the last thing we need to do is just unbind the event once we begin the dialogue otherwise you'll be able to keep slamming the interact key and restarting the dialogue and that's as simple as just linking this directly to this event here so a nice little short so as soon as you start the dialogue unbind the event so you can't start it again otherwise if you leave the radius then don't start it again so if we come into our engine and click our characters we should see we now have a auto trigger dialogue which is false so i'm going to tick it true for him because i want him to have it but those two they'll have to be manually triggered if we walk up to him he should auto start perfect so that's working correctly so we can just skip through all of that but if i walk up to these two nothing will happen so i've left the radius if i come into him and press the key you can see i pressed e and it has now begun the dialogue absolutely perfect and just to test rusty as well nothing's happening so we come up and press it again perfect and his mustache is randomly floating in the middle of nowhere that is creepy but yes perfect there you go ladies and gentlemen that is how to create a super basic interaction method for your game So for the second version is it'll work a lot better for first person shoot teams a bit like mine but it will also fix some bugs that we have so for example if i come up to rusty and turn around i can still interact with him even though i'm not looking at him and that could cause some major issues down the line so what we're going to do now is look at the second method of doing this and it's again really simple to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come into my blueprints here and i'm going to create a new folder called interfaces and inside here i'm going to right click blueprint blueprint interface and i'm going to call it bpi underscore interactable there we go and once you open it up we just need to rename this one function to just be called interact there we go and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come to my npc and i'm going to click the class settings at the top and down the side you will have imports interfaces inherited interfaces and implemented interfaces so under implemented interfaces we're going to click it and we're going to add our bpi interactable there we go and now that we've added that you can see that we have this new interfaces tab here called interact and this is what's going to happen when we interact this npc so i'm going to double tap it and in here we have an event that we can program so what i'm going to do we're pretty much going to copy what we've just done in the previous part so if you haven't watched that please just rewind and watch it so where we have event interact here once this is called we have looked at the npc we have pressed the interact key and we need to actually play the dialogue so the first thing i'm going to do is add a branch here and i'm just going to check if this npc should trigger automatically which true it would have already have been taken care of above or false then we need to begin the dialogue so what i'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to right click get player pawn and I'm just going to cast it my first person character like so from here I'm going to get the narrative component and I'm just going to begin dialogue like so and then we can plug in our dialogue variable into it and we can leave everything else alone that's completely fine so for the purpose of this demo I'm just going to come and untick the manual binding for this one so I'm just going to leave that alone so we've only got our new interface here I'm going to compile and save and that seems very small and we do need to do another little bit now so back on the player here it is very common for first person shooters to shoot a line ray from the camera outwards a line ray is simply a line that's fired from one point to another so we're going to fire it probably from the center of the camera outwards or from the center of the player outwards and as we're walking around the world if it detects something that's got the interface of interactable and we press the interact key we can interact with it and begin and this can work for pickups or anything else so what i'm going to do is come to my event graph here and right underneath this ed interact instead I'm going to come down and I'm going to tie event tick and now I know event tick is frowned upon and it is frowned upon if you don't use it correct in this case we're checking every frame if the player is interacting with something which is a very valid course for it so what we're going to do from this event tick is I'm going to drag out and I'm going to do a line trace for objects and what this is going to do is fire a line directly from wherever we specify so I'm going to point in the middle of the camera directly outwards and if it hits anything it will report back and tell us it's super useful to do so for the start position we 
need to figure out where we're doing it from. For me, I'm just going to do it in front of the first person camera I have. I'm going to drag from this and I'm going to do get world location. And I'm just going to drag this into the start line. So directly from the middle of the camera, fire. That's where the line will begin. Next, we need to take into account the character's rotation. So if you imagine this arrow here is the character's line. If we fire forwards, it will probably it will fire straight forwards. But if we rotate him, then we still need it to fire from the direction of the arrow, not the world's not world space forwards. We need to run it local space, otherwise we'll have issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. I'm going to get the current controller with get controller. From here, I'm going to get control rotation. So we can actually get the rotation. So whichever angle they are rotated at. And I'm just going to do get forward vector. Now, anything we multiply by this forward vector should go along the local axis forward of your character. So no matter where they're rotated. And then all we have to do is multiply this by how long we want the line to be. I'm going to right click this vector and just do two integer. And I'm going to say, set it to 5,000. You might want to massively reduce it, but we can play with it just to see. And all we do now is from the world location, which is the start, add on to it our new vector here, and then add that to the end, just like so. For the object types, I'm going to drag off and I'm just going to do make array. And this is what object types we actually want to report we've found in the world. So for me, I'm just going to do a pawn for now, but you can add as many of these if you want. You might have an extra pickup one or something else you want to use. For the draw debug type, just temporarily, I'm going to add it for one frame for for duration and i'm going to open it up and set the draw time to five so it will render the line for five seconds so we can now let's just test it so if i compile and save if we open it up and click run but if i start looking at people or places objects it will start showing a red dot because it's hit it now we can't see the green on the other side because we're in first person mode i'm just going to break out that very quickly and come over here you can see the red line has hit the npc and turned to green because it means it's successfully hit it as you can see that's where it starts where our camera is looking all the way down and that's going to fire 5,000 units ahead which as you can see is extremely long which is why I said you might want to customize so I'm just going to probably reduce mine to about a thousand for a good test there we go so next after we've got the actor here we can drag out from this out hit and it'll tell us what it's hit and as you can see there's a lot of things it reports but the main one we want to take care of is the hit actor here this will tell us what it's hit and because we've added an interface it makes it really easy that we can simply come and type does in implement interface like so and the test object is the object we've hit so we can now collapse like that back down and the interface we're checking is our bpi interactable so is it interactable if it is then we can add a branch here to say we've hit it and it's it's meant to be interactable and now what we can do from this hit actor is we can drag off and we can just tie interact message like so and because it implements the interact message and it's interactable once we call interact on it it will run the method on the npc that we've added here thus starting the dialog so now this will work as soon as we look at the enemy, at the NPC, it will call the interact method. So we can try this now, but it's not finished yet. So if we run up now, and if we, oh, there you go. As soon as we looked at him, it called it look because we've got a long distance. So if I walk up to him and look down, boom, it interacts straight away because we're looking at him. And that's perfect because we were actively looking at him. However, it's removing the point of pressing the key bind. We've still got an automatic look, which is not something we want. So what I'm actually going to do is when we get this hit actor, if they actually implement the interface of interactable i'm not going to interact with them but instead i'm going to promote them to a variable and call it looked at actor and that's the actor that we're currently looking at like so and now we can delete this interact one off here. so if they don't implement the interface then i'm just going to simply set the look at actor to nothing like so however one other thing i'm going to do is drag all this across and add a branch here and jump into the return value here so if it does return something it will attempt to interact with them but if it doesn't then what i'm actually going to do is clear the lookout actor again away so we have not got there so we'll always cache an actor that we are currently looking at but if we look away from them then it will remove them like so and then the only other thing we need to do is on the interact here is instead of call ed interact which we don't really need anymore i'm going to drag in our look at actor and i'm going to drag up and say is valid and you want the one with the question mark if you pick the function it won't work the same and then if the look at actor is valid meaning it's got something in it then i'm going to take the look at actor and i'm just going to call interact with the message here so it'll tell it begin the interact begin the interaction and now now that we cache the actor and we remove it if we're not looking at it if i start the game and if i walk up to this actor here you can see nothing happens but the red dot is appeared because we're there meaning we can walk up and press e and it begins the interaction because we pressed e fantastic if i leave the dialogue and look at him it just says nothing i can't activate it when looking away from him i can only activate it while looking i press e we can interact with him and then same for the guy here he'll just automatically kick in because that's what he wants to do perfect and that's all ladies and gentlemen 
action. So that is two ways in order to create an interactable, to create a key pressed interact dialog thing for your game. You've got the basic way where you use an event dispatcher and that'll work for third person games and other stuff like that, that'll work really well. For a first person game, you also now have the interface method of interactable here. And because it's generic, this interact method, you can also add it to pickups and stuff like that as well. It should work for everything, not just dialogue. And with using both systems, I'm actively just going to go and get rid of the event dispatcher here. because I don't need it anymore now that we have the first person line. So I'm going to get rid of that. But either way, will be good for your games and they will work if you need them to. Perfect. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you've got any other ideas for tutorials, please let me know in the comments below. Like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time.